Ah, Katarina. Poor, doomed Katarina. Welcome to the Time Treadmill. I'm Ron, and these are my sweaty thoughts about Doctor Who. This morning I watched episodes 3 and 4 of the Daleks' Master Plan. Let me catch you up on the story a little bit. The Daleks have entered into a pact with the leaders of the eight outer galaxies in order to take over the universe. Included in this pact is Mavic Chen, essentially the president of the solar system. He's universally beloved by humanity and seen as the defender of peace throughout the solar system. Nobody has any idea that he's turned traitor. Into this mix, the TARDIS arrives onto the planet Kemble, which was the setting of Mission to the Unknown a few days ago. There, the Doctor joins forces with Brett Vian, played by Nicholas Courtney, and uncovers the entire Dalek plot, including the fact that the Daleks have obtained a full M of Terranium, an incredibly rare element that took 50 years for Mavic Chen to harvest, and which is the core component to the Daleks' ultimate doomsday weapon, the Time Destructor. And that brings us up to Episode 3, where the Doctor and Brett and Steven and Katarina escape in Mavic Chen's own spaceship, headed back to Earth to warn everyone of the Daleks' titular master plan. My wife loves it when I say titular. Now the pivotal thing that happens in today's viewing comes along in episode four, in which on board the spacecraft, Katarina finds herself held hostage in the airlock by a stowaway. As everyone on board the ship struggles to find a way to free her, Katarina sacrifices her own life by pushing the button to eject herself and the stowaway out into space, both of them instantly dying in the vacuum of space. This is the first time in the history of Doctor Who that a companion of the Doctor dies. Remember a few days ago when Vicky left the show and I commented that the writers seemed to only conceive of one possible way for a young single woman to leave the show? Well, here, Terry Nation found another one. That's not entirely surprising given that nihilism is a central feature of Terry Nation's writing. And believe me, all you have to do is watch Blake 7 to realize that that's the absolute truth. Now the interesting thing about Katarina's departure behind the scenes is that it originally wasn't supposed to go that way. She was intended to be a long-term replacement for Vicky. Unfortunately, as soon as the writers started dealing with her as an ongoing character, they realized they had a huge problem on their hands. Katarina, coming from historical Troy, has absolutely no knowledge of any kind of technology whatsoever. And in fact, everything being presented to her in the show is akin to magic. She simply had no way of conceiving what any of this was. Now, you might argue that the same was true of Ian and Barbara. Certainly they had no inkling of space travel and time travel and any of that. But Ian and Barbara could both act as perspective characters for the audience. Anything that the audience needed to be explained to them could be explained to Ian and Barbara in terms that a 20th century viewer would understand. She's from a point so deep in history that she can't even act as a perspective proxy for the audience. She needs everything explained to her as if she was a small child, and even that is beyond her comprehension. And so, the writers made the difficult decision that she had to leave the show and be replaced. Which brings us to episode four of Dalek's Master Plan and her sacrificing her own life to save the other companions and to save the universe from the Daleks. Now, as brutal as that moment is, Terry Nation follows it up with yet another significant death at the end of the episode, with Nick Courtney's character Brett Vion killed by another security agent on Earth, Sarah Kingdom. Ah, and that brings us to Sarah Kingdom. But that is a story for tomorrow. I'll see you then.